Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast, where we take a look inside the lives of the accomplished and successful businessmen and women. We'll get up close and personal with the founders of booming startups. So lean in and prepare to carry away something to skyrocket your own business. Please subscribe to our show and do leave us a review. It means a lot to us. Now, here's your host, Rajiv. Hey listeners, welcome to the Entrepreneur Talk Show. I'm your host, Rajiv Unikrishnan, and this is the show where we talk about entrepreneurship to great founders, entrepreneurs, and investors. Today we have this Mani Sethi, founder at Pavlok. Just to highlight to my listeners, I did order the device a week after the show and tested it out and kicked off a bad habit in three days flat. Boy, does it work. Uh, do email me for more details. Now, on to the show. Pavlok is a wearable device that uses uh, conditioning through haptic feedback to modify behavior. Uh, users are said to be able to break bad habits by pairing the behavior with up to, I think, what, 300 plus volts of uh, haptic feedback and yeah. can establish new routines by pairing the behavior with vibration. Just a brief intro on Manish. Uh, he's a Boston resident who spent four years traveling across uh, Europe, South America, Asia before moving to Boston three years ago. Uh, he's also the chairman and ch- chief executive of Behavioral Technology Group. He did his bachelor's from Stanford and he is the editor of Hack the System and has also worked as a right hand of Tim Ferriss for the launch of the Foie Chef. Again, uh, welcome Manish, welcome to the show. Do fill in the gaps, if any, in the intro and do let us know what's going on in your world today. Definitely. I uh, know that's exactly right. I, I focused on Hack the System for a while while I was traveling. Um, it was mostly a travel blog about how to experience a new type of life. And then the one of my blog posts became the idea for Pavlok. Okay. Um, so yeah, Pavlok is more, it's like a wearable device, as you said, that helps people change their behavior and break bad habits. Great. So before we move into the actual product, uh, so any passions outside of work? These days, I wish I had time. <laughs> uh, yeah, lang- languages, travel are big ones. Um, I used to be a DJ, so music is a big one. Okay. Um, and recently I've been getting really interested in, uh, deep learning and psychology of okay. personalities and putting them all together in Pavlok. Is amazing. Great. I also just started a master's in psychology at Harvard extension school. So that's kind of fun. I get oh. to do it while I'm Oh, that's working. superb. All right. So coming to the inevitable question is what inspired the idea of Pavlok? Sure. So I used to be a tra- uh, travel blogger for hack the system and I've always been severely ADHD, um, meaning unfocused Mm -hmm. attention deficit disorder since I was a kid. Um, And so I used to, on my blog, I would do experiments to try to make myself more productive. And in one experiment, I hired someone whose job was to sit down next to me, make me stay on task. And if I got off task, she could slap me in the face. Okay. And uh, I wrote this video, I made a video and I posted it on my blog about how much work I got done when she sat down next to me, hitting me if I was being off task. And my post became super viral. It was in you know, hundreds of different news sources and TV shows. And uh, it was such an interesting concept. I, I called a friend and I said, hey, man, what if I made like a, a, a shock collar that could shock me every time I go on Facebook instead? And he said, oh, my God, that's a good idea. Let's try it out. So we, we decided to do like a little fun weekend project where we modified a little um, remote controlled collar for dogs to make it at me when I went on Facebook. Okay. And uh, within like, I was, I made a video, it was really funny. And I thought to myself, this is actually really interesting. There's a million wearables out there tracking what I do, but this one's actually changing what I do. Maybe this is more important than a blog post. Maybe this is actually a product that can really help people. And that was where the idea came from. Excellent. And what would the vision be for the behavioral technology group? Yeah, I mean, we make, we make technology that makes it possible for human beings to stick to their goals. So our end game here is any human being who says, I want to do this or mm-hmm. I don't want to do that, yep. they should have no chance of failure. So that's our biggest core. Uh, the, the big moving mission of our company is to cure the world of addiction and help people achieve the goals they set for themselves. Great. And, and so when you thought of this idea, I mean, was it just you who made this idea a reality? Any like uh, co-founders or partners such as? So I got invested in by a hardware startup incubator in Boston called Bolt, yep. B-O-L-T. Yep. And um, so obviously without them, I couldn't exist. And they offered me a spot as a sole founder. It's actually kind of funny. They had a, a slot, like they had like seven slots that they were giving um, to people to join their incubator program. Correct. They had like a 
B2B slot, a business, a B2C slot, like business to business, business to consumer. And then they had a uh, wild card slot. <laughs> like, uh, we don't know. Let's just try something crazy. Okay. And I, w- I was the wild card slot. So I came in with no idea of hardware. Um, it was like the smart, the, 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 the funny guy with a marketing experience and a, and a pretty cool idea. Let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> so basically, yeah. So basically they stuck me in a room in a hardware lab for a year, gave me money and said, make it happen. Um, and so it was like a big, the first year and a half was just trying to get anybody in the world to help me figure out what the heck was going on. Cause I didn't know anything about hardware. <laughs> Correct. Um, but over time, I found some people. I had um, I, uh, he, somebody joined my team for about six months to help me build our alphas. Uh, he was his name's Jim Lynch. Mm-hmm. He's the um, inventor of Lego Mindstorms, like the Lego robots. Okay. And the uh, lead engineer on the Roomba floor cleaning robot. Oh yeah, I know that. So yeah, so he joined our team for about six months and helped me build out our technology. And then since then, I've been our team has grown to thirty people now, just about. Uh, all working on hardware, software, customer service, fulfillment, et cetera. Great. So, I mean, when you thought of the idea, how did you test it out? Did you launch an MVP or just straight away decide, okay, this is it, I'm going to launch this? Mm, when I launched it? Well, when I had the idea, it was from the slapping post, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so then I, I was building this device for me, and then I got the investment. Um, I didn't want to announce it until the product was built. Okay. Uh, so we launched our company. I started my, um, my Boston company in August 1st, 2013. Um, fifty thousand dollars, and we started building this product out, and uh, you know, really rapidly ran out of money because hardware <laughs> costs a lot of money. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it was about um, March, probably February or March of 2014, when I realized we had no money, and I had to figure out a way to 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 keep our company afloat. Yep. So I hosted a webinar and pre-sold a bunch of products. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, we, we had a, a big announcement just to like the readers of my old blog and, uh, it, it was really successful. It kept us afloat, ended up with us shipping their alpha units. We made like 50 alpha handmade units. Okay. Um, in July of 2014, we, uh, launched our crowdfunding campaign in November, uh, of 2014. And then that was when we had a big breakthrough about what our technology could okay, do. Okay. Um, so the basic story is this, when I started the company, it was basically to copy off the Craigslist slapper. I believed that I needed to be reminded when I did bad things to yeah. make me stop my behavior. Right. So it needed to know when I did something bad and then send me a vibration, a beep or a zap. Okay. What we found halfway through our crowdfunding campaign uh, was when I was Googling on scholar.google.com, all of the old studies, yep. I was looking up shock, I was looking up zap, and I found a concept of um, addiction cessation called aversion therapy. Okay. And this was a very common type of addiction cessation or bad habit cessation that, w- uh, that was done commonly in the 1960s through the 1990s, disappeared in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And what it, what it was was uh, five to seven days where a user would be instructed by a doctor to do a bad habit while they were zapped at the same time, either manually or by the doctor's remote. So they would tell they would tell a patient, or, you know, smoke, uh, uh, eat this sugary food, or smell this sugar and receive a zap, or take a puff of a cigarette and get a zap at the same time you puff a okay. cigarette. Okay. Okay. And um, the, the the cessation rates were rapid, were way higher than any other a, a type of. Um, of therapy you can find like we're talking like six to seven times more effective in less than a week than six months of wearing a nicotine patch okay and i was like holy crap this is just hardware no software needed just putting pushing the button while you do something you don't want to do anymore will create a pavlovian association so that was a big breakthrough for us because we realized number one we didn't need to have the software. You like the software didn't need to know when you were doing bad correct, stuff. Correct. You needed to know, and you could train yourself by making yourself do the behavior on purpose for a period of a week and pressing the button while you did it. And number two, it led to infinite amount of habits because now it's not just about what websites we can track. Yeah. Now it's about okay, you want to quit drinking? Well, drink and press the button. Do you want to quit biting your nails? Well, bite your nails and press the button. And that was a big breakthrough because we suddenly realized that we had um, a solution to 
a lot of bad habits and that there wasn't anything out there that helped other people with these problems. Great. So like, so for our listeners, Pavlok is a band. So when you, so when you wear it, so do you have to like manually press the button each time you want to like, you do something wrong that you want to get over? Uh, in the last, uh, in 2015, you did. Okay. Um, so basically what happened, so no. So the answer is um, uh, it works in two ways. So first of all, there's the, so there's the wake up mode and then there's the um, bad habit mode. Okay. So bad habit mode is essentially, it's a, a seven day training program. Um, it's about five to 10 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. First two days, it's just audio. You learn about it. It's, it's just an audio program. So you listen to an audio file teaching you about the brain, teaching you about habits. And then the first two days, you track your behavior while you do it throughout the day. Okay. Um, then the, on the dawn days three through seven, you do a five-minute, five-day um, aversive conditioning training session. So you basically, for five minutes, you hit go on the app. Okay. And then start doing the behavior. And every few seconds, it'll give you a zap while you do that behavior. Oh, okay. Um, so you, got, yeah, you just go through the five days of the five-minute program. Okay. And I mean, how long does it take? I mean, normally that you've seen uh, to get over a habit that you want to get over? About five to seven days. That's it? So like, Excellent. Yeah, it's really quick. Yeah, so most of our users, like for nail biting, for hair picking, for quitting unhealthy eating or snacking between meals, um, that's a big one. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of people are using it now for negative thoughts. I used oh, it yeah. for... Yeah, I used it for negative thoughts all the time. I used it to get over my ex-girlfriend, which was necessary. <laughs> um, yeah, and... Uh, pretty powerful because really what it does is it's like, um, you know, like when you're in a bad mood and then someone's like, come on, snap out of it. Like, snap correct, out of it. correct. Correct. Yeah. This is, the, this is a button that you can press that snaps you out of it. Okay. And if you look at the brain, it's like most activity is, is in the back of the brain where, where it's called your reptile brain or your limbic system where your emotions and your habits live. And most of your time is spent in that like habit mode. So, you know, when you get sad, you, it's really hard to stop being sad. Um, cause you get into like this mm-hmm. mode, yep, but, yep. uh, but when you think like the prefrontal cortex, the prefront, the front part of your brain, that's the part that thinks and responds and is logical. Getting yourself to activate that frontal cortex is really hard. That's why like throughout the day you start doing, you know, bad habits. You start doing correct, things correct. where the zap is like, uh, uh, it's like a shock to the system It knocks you alert and makes you alert and aware. And it's a really interesting feeling because it snaps you out of whatever you're doing at that moment. Okay. Okay. So you also have a shock clock. Is it is it different or? So we changed the name. It's now called the Wake Up Trainer. Okay, okay. Um, wake Up Trainer. Okay. And the Wake Up Trainer is the same hardware as the Pavlock. The Pavlock includes the Wake Up Trainer plus the bad habits. Okay. Got um, it. And the Wake Up Trainer is just the Wake Up plus. You can upgrade in the app to the full Pavlock later on. Oh, great. Okay. And the wake up trainer is designed to help people start building their morning routine. Okay. So wait, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. So the way it works is um, we found that the morning is the part of the, of the day where you're most able to achieve good habits. And it kind of sets the stage Correct. for what you want to become. Correct. Uh, so what we've done is we created a, wear, uh, a device, essentially. Um, I mean, the same device. Wear it to sleep. It tracks your sleep schedule. It starts to give you sleep analysis data, and we are trying. And it tries to vibrate and wake you up in your light stage of sleep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So okay. once you're out of bed, we um, we get you out of bed by waking you up at the right time. Then we keep you out of bed, so you have to start doing jumping jacks oh, to make okay. sure the alarm okay. the alarm will, the alarm wakes you up. If you don't do the jumping jacks, it'll start to zap you. Um, and then after that, we're now triggering it so you you choose the routine you want to form. Like you pick the routine of the pers- of the famous people in our app. So we're, we're building these right now. So it's like, which routine do you want? The Einstein, the Franklin, you know, you pick like a, uh, the routine of some famous person in the past and, um, each in the morning. So it's like, I wanted to, uh, get out of bed and then I want to walk, take a walk outside for a thousand steps. And then I want to sit down and write in my, um, on my google.com docs. Uh, and then I want to, uh, drink a glass of water. Okay. And so what our app what our app will do is it'll make you get out of bed and start doing jumping jacks. Then it will make sure you start taking your walk. Otherwise, it'll start to vibrate, beep, and zap you. Then after you finish your walk, it'll make sure you start doing um, whatever the next step was. And then it'll make sure that you do your, your, your water as well. 
um, it's, it, the next step being sitting down in front of your computer. It'll it'll make sure that you're on your laptop on that URL in that web browser. Okay. Um, so what we're trying to do is essentially create a good system that enforces your morning routine. Got it. So like, uh, I mean, you said it's, I mean, other than habits is also to get over negative thoughts, etc. So you have these uh, kind of ideas that people may use to kind of buy this device because i mean you generally think of bad habits like smoking or biting nails etc but you don't think of negative thoughts etc so do you are you putting it out there that people can you use the device for these things also yeah we're always really careful about it because you know you have to be careful yeah. but um <laughs> but i mean we let our users tell a story okay so right. like i i didn't know about the negative thoughts until our users started telling us um and so we've started to see that we're finding the habits that users are using our product for Got are it. very interesting. Got yeah. it. Got it. So, I mean, I've read on the net uh, your infamous Shark Tank episode, Turning Down Kevin Leary. So, yeah. for our listeners, yeah. I just want them to know how they can react to Venture Guys. What, what was that all about? <laughs> yeah. So, did you get the chance to see it? I saw a bit of it, <laughs> but I was in the office. Yeah, so it's I pretty, didn't... <laughs> pretty entertaining. Um, yeah, so I was on a show called Shark Tank. It's one yeah. of the most popular shows in America where they have five people and you pitch to them uh, your idea and try to get money. Um, yeah, so if you watch my episode, it was very, very popular in the sense that it was viewed by a lot of people. But um, it was not the most positive. Basically, I turned down Kevin O'Leary. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's an um, investor. He's Canadian but lives yep. in America. Yep. And he's kind of rude. Not a very nice guy. I know. <laughs> um, and his, yeah, so I knew because of the stories I'd read, I've seen his videos okay. online about uh, his investment deals, et cetera. And I knew I didn't want to work with him because investment is not about money as much as it is about partnership. Correct. And having the wrong partner in a business deal is worse than having a bad wife or a <laughs> Correct. bad husband. Correct. It's like maybe not worse. I don't know, but like it's like it's possible to escape a marriage, but you can't escape a contractual business arrangement, you know. And so, uh, and so maybe you can. I don't know, but it's still a very, very bad problem when someone who doesn't share your values is um, invested in your company and owns part of it because they they have control. So I turned down his offer, and then he yelled at me, "F you, you a hole." F. -R. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> he cursed at me quite strongly on TV. Uh, so that's what happened. Um, since then it's the best decision I've ever made was to turn down his, his investment. Um, we're gross. We're doing quite well as a company and, uh, I don't have to deal with, uh, negative personalities. Have you ever bumped into him or like communicated with him? After no, that? he's in Boston though. He's actually based in Boston. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm like thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, any distributors outside of us, I mean, you're selling through different platforms, but any distribution in Asia as such? So actually, recently, we've been getting um, a ton of distributors. So we, we just um, we actually turned down a distributorship deal this week. We decided to focus on digital uh, for our sales okay. this, this okay. year and next year to go into retail. Um, but we be, the reason why is because when you start going into big distributorships, they start having really scary terms. Correct. Like, correct. Like, like Walmart will pay you months after you send them the product. So, you know, you have to fund the building of the product without having any revenue. Um, so we decided to push that off and instead we're focusing on, um, our own site and online digital sales, things like Amazon, things Big, like, uh, okay. New egg. But what's cool is like, a couple weeks ago, we went, we were on, um, a Japanese Monday night, late night, Monday night talk show mm -hmm. for 10 minutes. They showed our product for 10 minutes. And so ever since then, the ja like uh, a bunch of Japanese buyers have been buying uh, bulk orders of our product to resell. Excellent. So it's been kind of a cool um, time. Okay, I was there. I was there on Monday, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. and uh, so, so you have done like around uh, almost like two million dollars uh, already in two thousand sixteen. And so, where are you seeing most of the growth from? Is it like any particular region globally, or it's like all over? Well, I mean, U.S. is our biggest market, Correct. and um, there's a lot of reasons for that. And I, I think is it's interesting because the way that we frame the product is different for different countries. So, like in America, everyone wants to be better than they are, more productive fit. Like it's about uh, being a better version of yourself. In a lot of European countries, it's a lot about like not being weird or not standing out too far. So they want to get rid of negative thoughts or get rid of like weird ticks or scratches. Um, and then in like Japan, it's about, I want to wake up. I got to get up, go to bed because I have to. 
And so we're seeing a lot of growth right now in Japan, of course. Um, our biggest markets are America, Canada, UK, Australia, Singapore recently, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, we did. We started running a couple campaigns, uh, and Singapore was just crushing it. Okay. Uh, and um, what else? Yeah, the, so we, the, uh, those are our big ones right now. Okay. So in terms of competition, I've seen nothing other than your comparison with the rubber band, but is there anything else in the market like this? Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like other, like, I mean, you can get, like, if you want to start using a Pavlok and you don't have the money to use it, like, a rubber band is a good start. Correct. Uh, if, you sna- if you snap it when you have a negative thought or if you snap it when you want to, if you do five minutes and you smoke a cigarette while you snap a rubber band. We tested this on a, a group of our users. Uh-huh. Um, it had, a, I mean, it had about half as much success as the people who use the Pavlok. Um, and I think the majority of the reason was because wearing a rubber band and snapping it leaves, like, really big red oh, marks. Oh, yes. Yeah, and it's like kind of yeah. So you don't want to. Uh, so people would give up um, when they started bleeding. I actually tried that so, for a day after after we fixed up our interview. <laughs> it wasn't too oh, yeah. user friendly. <laughs> the, the rubber band. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not too user friendly. Yeah. That's uh, that's why. Like, yeah, we're we're thinking about making like a April Fool's joke where we're like Pavlok's newest invention, the world's <laughs> best. Like in a fancy box with like big colors and then you open it up and it's just a rubber band. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, there's, we don't have any competition in the, like, no, I don't know any, I mean, there's dog collars that shock you. Correct, um, correct. There's shocking business pen, the like, business cards and shocking pens and stuff. But um, on the side of aversive conditioning or breaking bad habits. So on the habits angle, there's a lot of competition, right? But almost everybody is hyper-focused on forming habits. Correct, correct. Um, we're the only person I know um, who's like a tech company doing bad habits. Okay. Um, our competitors, like I wouldn't even consider them competitors. They're more like possible partners. Are like drug companies who make drugs that help you quit addictions. Correct. correct. Or um, a, like uh, therapy clinics or like Alcoholics Anonymous or things like that. Those are honestly places that we're trying to partner with rather than. Comp- okay. So one of our biggest core values of the company is a function of. Um, of like modularity and, and integration with people who help achieve other people's goals. Mm-hmm. So like a good example is Fitbit. They are, right. most people would think of them as our biggest competitor. I'm actually wearing a Fitbit right now. And we designed a Pavlok clip that clips directly onto your Fitbit. Oh, okay. So that it, so on one side, you can wear the, on one wrist, you can wear both. And then we use the Fitbit data to adjust your behavior. So if I haven't gotten up or walked enough steps with Fitbit, correct, correct. then zap me or beat me. Yeah. Great. So in terms of funding, you raised money from quite a few prophetic founders like Steve Camp, uh, Matt Kempness, of course, Ramit, John, Dave Asprey, and more. So, I mean, are you like making enough revenues that you're not going to raise in the near future? Or are you planning to raise some more in the near future? My goal is to stay away from raising as much as possible okay. for the near term. Okay. Uh, we raised our last round. Uh, we, we raised a total of about half a million dollars, which uh, sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot of money for a hardware startup. Correct. Um, and uh, we raised our, we closed, we, I mean, the last investment I took was like January of 2015. Okay. Um, I think that's right. Great. Yeah. 2015. So, so since then I've been staying away from it. Great. We're trying to run our company profitably, which is, a very different game um, than raising money. But it's always good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's totally, it's a, it's a mindset shift because yeah, when you're trying yeah. to raise money, you're saying, I know what I need to do to be a success. So let me find the money to make sure my idea happened. Correct. And in my mindset, it's here's the amount of money and resources I have. What can I do with it to get us to the next step? Correct. And what I found is like every time I'm pretty sure of something, I'm always wrong about what customers will respond to. And our biggest innovations of the company have always come from times when we were really low on cash and have to figure out a way to survive. And that has led to our big, our best decisions as a company. Being lean and, and, and looking for how do we survive is really a critical thing we do. Great. So um, just, I mean, just want our listeners to know, like, what is Hack the System all about? Sure. So Hack the System is more or less defunct. I haven't updated it okay. in two years. Um, But Hack the System is essentially my brain on travel. And so it's like a supremely ADHD site of different things that I wanted to talk about for years while I traveled. Um, And what I did was essentially travel around the world and show people that you can move to new countries and that you could do, you could become successful at your goals in a very rapid way if you approach goals not as 
uh, if you approach goals in the right way. So the, okay. the tagline was cheat codes for life. And so I taught people how to learn a language in 90 days. I speak five. I learned, I, I learned how to speak fluently in 90 days, a couple languages. Okay. Um, I, uh, I talked about how you can lose weight rapidly. I lost like 27 pounds in a very simple way. I just moved into the wilderness uh, <laughs> where there's no cookies around. <laughs> yeah. you, you lose weight, right? um, I taught people how to become more productive, like getting slapped in the face, et cetera. I taught people how to become a uh, break into new societies, like becoming a DJ in Berlin. So it was very random stuff, but it was very kind of, um, all of it is very similar to Pavlock. It's all kind of a foundation. Okay. Okay. So moving out of business, uh, I mean, over time, who has influenced you most in life? Uh, by far my brother. Okay. Um, SAT, he runs a website called I will teach to be rich. Yep. Uh, he's, um, been a huge inspiration in my life. Uh, Tim Ferriss was a massive inspiration in my life. He led to me leaving, uh, leaving the U S and traveling for four years and starting my blog. Um, plus I helped him later on, write, uh, publish his, his, uh, or market his four hour chef book. I got to live with him for two months, which was really great. Cool. Great. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he, who else is so good? He's got a great show. <laughs> yeah. His podcast. Is killing yeah, cool. Um, and a couple other people have influenced me. Um, who, who I've worked with, uh, Daniel D Piazza from rich 20 something.com has been really okay. inspirational. Derek Halpern, from social triggers has been really helpful. Um, those are probably top four. Okay. And over time, what's some of the best advice you've been given? For what? Generally, over time, just some of the best advice on entrepreneurship um, or everything, anything else in life. Basically, if when I make a big decision, I always look at look at how I would feel in fifty years and say, would I be likely to regret having done this or regret not having done this? Okay. And almost always it's regret not having done this. So that was understanding that, that um, fear is stupid because you won't look at it the same way in the past. Okay. Um, some other good advice was a, was a book recommendation by Derek Halpern. He, uh, he recommended I read this book called The Art of Speed Reading People. And that book was about personality types and how to identify other people's and your own personality type and what that means for how you should work. Okay. And that book was mind bogglingly completely changed my life because I, I understood for the first time why, even though I was a failure, according to ADHD, having a disorder mm -hmm. that that actually wasn't a disorder. It was a personality trait and that that trait is actually a very cool trait that can be used well if you surround yourself with people who are finishers. Got it. And okay. so I'm a starter, comes up with new ideas, but I have insane trouble sitting down and writing an email. Okay. So rather than me trying to write my emails, what if I just let myself come up with ideas and then hire people who will just send the email? Okay. And uh, that has been a mind shift. Great. I mean, you've done uh, so many ventures. Uh, so any like, low point in your entire entrepreneurial career that you just wanted to completely give up? Say again? You have any low point in your complete entrepreneurial journey where you just want to completely give up? And at any point in my entrepreneurial yeah. journey, have I ever wanted to give up? Correct. Yes. Uh, and I will tell you this, the times that I want to give up are always the times that we're doing in the best. Okay. So I'm very weird, but I also think I'm not that weird. Um, when someone comes to me and says, oh my God, Manish, good job. You can do this. You've got this. Then I'm totally demotivated and I don't care. Okay. But when someone says, you've got no chance of doing this, you're going to fail. Then I'm like, screw you. And I hyper focus <laughs> on okay. success. Right. So um, finding that that's been true, uh, I found that um, the best, like, so the best things I've ever done is, is get in, is understand that the concept for what I just said, that competition motivates me mm -hmm. is uh, an extremely powerful motivator for some types of people. And also it's replicable, meaning I can build that fear of loss by getting bets or accountability consequences. So instead of me trying to get myself to sit down and write, I'll just make a bet with my friend that if I don't send it to him by the end of the week, I owe him money. Okay. And as soon as the bet is made, my brain just changes and just sits down and finishes it. So it doesn't lose. Okay. And, um, so that like ability to understand my own processing means that I just make bets all the time. Great. And anything, uh, like at present that's getting you and the team really excited, any new launch or feature or feature on your products coming out? Yeah. Our wake up trainer is making us really excited. Okay. So, um, the, 
the building the morning routine, I think, is going to be a big deal. Great. And where do you see yourself and your product uh, in the next, my business in the next two to three years? Uh, next two to three years, I, I imagine we'll be in retail or have our own retail stores around the U.S. and abroad. Um, I believe that we'll have uh, got, we'll be in me- our medical division. We'll have gotten our FDA clearance as our goal. Um, okay. So we can we can sell both to consumers as a medical device and also to doctors uh, in hospitals. Okay. And I'd like to um, take our wearable as a modular function. I'd like to make it um, a wearable that other people can white label and resell as their okay. own. Okay. Got so um, build a wearable for wear- for other people. Okay. Great. So now we come to a part of the show which is a quick fire round, simple brief answers. Okay. So when people ask you what do you do, how do you answer that? Uh, I run a wearable device company. Okay. When you think of the oh, word, when you think of the word successful, who is the first person that comes to mind? My brother. When you, what do you excel at that people might not realize? Mm, uh, languages or idea generation. Okay. <laughs> and what is something you believe in that other people think is totally insane? Personality types. And what would Manish's greatest weakness be? Oh, it's a lack of focus. Okay. 100%. All right. Uh, I mean, you're in the US, so M commerce or e commerce? Say that again? M commerce or e commerce? It was M commerce. Mobile commerce. So, mobile device? Oh. Or? I, for me, or what? Like, I mean, I prefer yeah, desktop, but. Okay. I prefer desktop, but a lot of our users are mobile. Okay. And favorite city globally? Buenos Aires or Berlin. All right. <laughs> Finally, any sure. last thought or piece of advice that you want to give our listeners? Mm, yeah. Um, like, Take the time and, and read a little bit on personalities. I really think that um, if you feel like you're ever lost, like you ever have a conversation with someone and you just don't connect or you ever try to get yourself to do something and you fail, it's often a function of your personality. And it's not that you should, you're just, you're trying to make yourself do the wrong thing. You should be focusing on your strengths and finding people to support your weaknesses rather than trying to make yourself do what everybody else does. Okay. And please let our listeners uh, know. Yeah, of course. Yep. Check out Pavlok. All right, of course. <laughs> and please let our listeners know how they can reach you and also Pavlok. Sure. Um, so we have a, you can check, you can reach me at um, you should pavlok.com. And I'm not very good at email. Um, so your mileage may vary. But uh, I, I answer email like once a month. Okay. <laughs> so um, my assistant does. I think you were in contact with him. Uh, we created for Pav, for Pav, uh, for Pavlock. Uh, we created a discount for you guys. So Great. if you go to pavlock.com slash t a e podcast, pavlock.com slash t a e podcast, you can uh, get a big discount on the Pavlock device. Um, thank you from the Entrepreneur uh, Podcast. And lastly. If you're on mobile right now, you can go ahead and just download the app for Pavlok. Okay. okay. Um, and it actually has a lot of interesting functions, and you can start working on your, your habits uh, even without the device. Great. So go ahead and, and try that out. Great. Again, Manish, thanks for taking the time to talk to us, inspiring our listeners to start their own ventures, and all the very best at building and scaling Pavlok. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do visit pavlok.com and visit us at theasianentrepreneur.com to get the show notes and subscribe to our show on all the platforms and leave a review on your thoughts about the show. Thank you. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. In the meantime, head over to theasianentrepreneur.com and check out show notes and other information to motivate you in your entrepreneurial endeavors.